Uh, because I'm speaking to young people, I want to be as real as possible. I will preach, yes, but I will also be as real to you as possible. When I was invited, I was given some aims um, to try and define the biblical understanding of music. Um, and also to biblically assess secularism and the consequences to a believer. Finally, I was uh, told to probably bring out the difference between the gospel industry and the gospel ministry. So these are the three aims by the end of this service that hopefully will understand this. I am notorious for going off topic sometimes. So you forgive me if I wave into my miasma of uh, testimonies. Um, I will try my best to keep to this topic. The someone will be available probably today. You can go through it. But as God was leading me, I will take an approach of my testimony. Um, as you've heard, I was born in a Christian home. My parents were bishops. My, my mother is an archbishop right now. Most of you maybe know her, Archbishop Winnie Owiti. Uh, my father, the late Archbishop Silas Owiti. Um, and so I was raised in a home where if you would look for anointing, <laughs> the highest anointing in Kenya, you would find it there probably. Because both my father and my mother were anointed. So I was expected to be a holy child. So see, I grew up as a, you know, going to church, coming to places like this, doing memory verses, uh, singing sometimes, doing skits. But I was not born again. I was not a believer. I was a good church goer. So I was talented in music, especially making beats. I'm good at making beats. Production, music production. That's what I do on the side as a hobby right now. So I started making beats by the age of, I think, 10. I was making beats using keyboards, then Fruity Loops, the computers, for those who know Fruity Loops. Um, and so I grew into this and I started playing the guitar in the church and the drums at the age of 14. The biggest challenge I had was my style of playing was not common in those days. <laughs> so I was playing what you would call a uh, rock, drum, or guitar style. But the style of music that was being sung in our church was the Afro, African worship, praise. So I used to have conflicts with my praise and worship leader. But you know, I was not born again. So after a lot of tassels and bustles, um, they chased me from the praise and worship team. Now, I think that was one of the worst mistakes ever because after that, I ended up right into the club. And they welcomed me. They say, come, Kuja, you are one of us. See, when you producer, they gave me a place to sit. They gave me a studio to work on. They even paid me to make music. I'm going so far with my testimony. I've even, let me, let me go back to the, <laughs> to the topic. I told you I usually wander off. So, um, music, music is the issue here. I love music. And because of my love of music, I moved away from the church, started producing secular music, and was becoming very famous and popular. Our issue today is gospel music. I want us to read the scripture that will be the foundation of our um, someone today. It's John chapter 4. Jesus talks with a Samaritan woman. Let's just start from uh, verse 3. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee and he had to go through Samaria. Then he came into a city of Samaria, which is called Seca, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. 
Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey sat on the well and was about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy food. And say the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that you being a Jew asks a drink of me, which is a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is it that says to you, Give me to drink, you would have asked of him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou have living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinks of this water shall thirst again, this water of this well of Jacob. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Let's skip to 24, 23 and 24. But the hour comes, and now it is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In verse 21, Jesus said to the woman, Believe me, the hour comes, and the hour has come, that you shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, ye worship ye, know not what we know, but we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Now, let me just get into the depth of this. This is the main scripture we are reading today. Music is backed up by a spirit. When music is being presented, it's important to know which spirit is behind the music. Praise God. Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, a time will come when true worshippers will worship and they will worship in spirit, in the Holy Spirit and in truth. So, gospel music emanates from the Spirit of God. A philosopher by Ivan describes music as an abstract, culturally defined emotion. He mentions that we all know what music is, how it makes us feel, but nobody can properly define it. Actually, music has never been defined. The dictionary tries to say it's rhythm, sounds, and harmony over time. But nobody can define what is music. How could they play? Is the keyboard on? Just, just hit a, hit a key or so. How, how comes, how comes, just, he can play something on the keyboard and, yeah, what is that? That, that you can hear something. That is traveling from there through the speaker to your ears. And it makes you feel something. It's spiritual. Music is spiritual. It's a gift from God. Music is good. And God created music. (laughs) I've heard many times the devil tries to steal the idea that he created music. Oh yeah, he was leading worship in heaven. Yes, but he did not create music. It's God who created music. The devil corrupts what God creates. So, in the Bible days, music was important in worship. Especially in the temple. If you start with the temple, when David was, uh, uh, was, was, uh, wanted to build God a temple, although Solomon's the one who finally built it, David was always celebrating. He's the father of gospel music. My sermon is a bit long, but I'll summarize because of time. 
David is the father of gospel music and he wrote the Psalms. Now, the Psalms were written by David. There is another prophet named Asaph who was the leader of music in those days. There was one known as uh, Je- Jedutun and there was one known as, uh, I think, Hemud, Hemud or something. I can't pronounce the Hebrew name properly. And there's also a psalm that is speculated that was written by Moses. Psalms are the origins of gospel music. Over the years, because you know this is thousands of years ago. But over the years, then, when Solomon built the temple, the choir was now formed officially. That was the first choir. Existing of about 288 people who were assigned to minister in the music ministry in the temple. And they used to have a choir of thousands of people singing and worshipping God every time they offered sacrifices. This is how music biblically began. Because you are trying to understand the biblical essence of music. It developed over the years to the times of the apostles. And after the apostles, you all know there was something called the Reformation. The Reformation means when the gospel now moved from Jerusalem and it was moving to the rest of the world and the church became unified known as the Catholic Church. I'm taking you through church history. And after the Catholic Church was unified, then there was a Reformation by Martin Luther King. So there was a process of history of music. Are we together? David, the apostles, the Catholic Church, then Lutheran Church, the Reformation. Okay? Tuko pamoja paka hapo. It's important we know the history biblically. So the Catholic Church was the first church to actually bring harmony and uh, especially to bring hymns into the music of the Psalms. However, the, later the reformers developed other forms of worship. Now, how did contemporary gospel music come to be? This one that we sing these days. It's later in the 1800s and 1900s that the American church incorporated jazz and blues into gospel music, into the church. And it's until the 1900s that amongst the first people to bring secular sounds into gospel, one was Aretha Franklin, whose parents were were pastors, and the other was Kirk Franklin, who I know most of you know. And from that point is when secular sounds entered the Christian church. It was all for the best of the cause. However, the problem and the question we have today is, what is the influence of secularism in gospel music? I think I've finished with a sort of boring part of history. I'll get back to my testimony. (laughs) So remember, I used to do music. I was a hip-hop artist. I used to rap. I used to do freestyles. So I came up to here in Maseno. There used to be Miss Maseno. Uh, it was it was on the other side. How is it called? There's a name you call the other side of Maseno. Pardon? See? Siriba, yeah? Yeah, Siriba. So I went to Siriba. We had a function in Siriba campus. And so the last time I was, I was in Maseno, actually, after that concert, before today, I was arrested. I was in the cell, just about here. I think we passed it here. That's the last time I was in Maseno before today. We had come to do a show again, but not in, not the Miss Maseno one. We had come with my friends, and I was, you know, we were rolling, we were, we used to come with, with, the, with the cars with the big sounds in a, in a boom, you know, with ladies and with, with alcohol and weed. And we were having fun and rolling, and so we came to the, um, I think it's called Kili Hostels. 
my friends were living there. So we were to sleep there at Kili Hostels. So my story is this. It's an awkward testimony, but I'll have to say it. So the rooms zilija. <laughs> and then I was, I was suggested for me, okay, there's a room. There was a girl's hostel in Mesau in Aituaje, somewhere there. Um, it's, it's not a very big hostel. What's the name? Guest house, eh? And maybe it's, I don't know. I can't remember the name. So, so I was told, you, you go there, you, with a spenduko if you're with some friends of yours. So me, I go there, eh, but somebody saw us. So, they called the police on us. So I was arrested. I was the only male person in that hospital. So I was taken back to the, to the cell over here in Nikalalauko for, I think, a day or two. Then I had a court case and all that. So what I'm speaking about is something I have real experience about. I've been in the world. I've been in the secular world. I've drunk alcohol. I've been in clubs. Like, I don't think anybody here has been in clubs the way I've been in clubs. I was known in all clubs in Kisumu. I was performing in most of the clubs. I even had a show, a hip-hop show in a club in Kisumu. Every Wednesday and Fridays. A club called Tammy's. And you see, all this I was doing because I wanted to fit in. And I loved music. Particularly hip-hop music. But I had no idea there was a spirit behind music. No idea. Me, I was just listening to music and... You just like... The way I saw somebody dancing here. And... You know, you just enjoy it, you just, you, you're just jumping, but you don't know there is a spirit behind the music. What is gospel music? What is gospel music? You can't understand gospel music without understanding the gospel. Because it is music of the gospel. The gospel is the power of God that brings one unto salvation. The gospel is powerful. It has spiritual power backing it up. The gospel is divided into four parts. Four principles. Principle one, God's creation. It's only God who created everything. There is no other truth other than the truth of God's creation. It's in Genesis 1 and 2. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. When it was void and without form. God is the creator. And God created everybody including music with a purpose. When singing gospel music. It has to have an element of the gospel. Element one, creation. Element two, Satan's deception. In Genesis chapter three, Satan deceived us. He deceived Adam and through one man's sin, death came unto all mankind. The reason why people die, the reason why sickness exists, the reason why we are wearing masks because of corona, is because there is death. Death is not only dying. Death is a result of Adam's sin in the Garden of Eden. Because Satan deceived us. Satan still deceives us today. He tells us not to believe what the Bible, the Bible says. You can be healed today. By his stripes you were healed. Satan says it's impossible. It can't happen. The Bible says no one will see God unless they are born again. Unless you confess salvation of Jesus Christ. Satan says no, there's many paths to heaven. There's Islam, Nini, Buddhism. You cannot go any, any, any way. He deceives even today. So Satan deceived us. That is principle two of the gospel. The gospel must speak about Satan's deception. Which results to sin and death. There's nothing that can explain death 
by the way. Aristotle, Plat, they could not explain that. They, they kept pondering their minds. Albert Einstein's, you know, Stephen Hawkins. All these philosophers, they could not, ex- and they cannot, because the only explanation for the source of death is in the gospel, in the Bible. Principle three. Jesus Christ's substitution. Jesus Christ substituted for our sins. He was innocent. He came and he took our sins upon him so that we can, believing in him, live as if we never sinned. Amen? He took our sickness. He bore our sickness upon his body so that we can live healthy. He became poor so that we can be prosperous. He was mocked and they made shame of him so that we can live in boldness without any guilt. The substitution of Jesus who was crucified and died on the cross and rose on the third day and is alive right now seated at the right hand of the Father that whole essence of Jesus substituting for us is part three of the gospel very important principle four of the gospel Christ's restoration this is complete through the Holy Spirit after Jesus Christ you know, resurrected and came back and went back to the Father. He sent his spirit. And now he says, whosoever believes in him shall not perish. And he says now that we can live as though we never sin. We can live like Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. Now why is this important? Gospel music is music that speaks about what? The gospel. Are we together? It's a song that speaks about the gospel. You will always hear something about God's creation, God's purpose, Satan's deception, Jesus Christ's substitution, his healing, his blessings, and our restoration. That's how you know a gospel song. You can't classify a song as gospel or secular just based on the beats. It's not only based on the beats. You can say it sounds like a gospel song. (laughs) Benga music sounds like gospel, but the lyrics and the spirit behind it is not Christian. There is reggae music that sounds like gospel, but it's not. Especially Lucky Dube. People like him, they think he's singing the gospel. He's not. (laughs) But there is good reggae music. There's reggae music that is gospel reggae music. So the genre of music is not how we determine the music itself. What is gospel ministry? I'm just about to close. Gospel ministry... It's being called by God to serve in the local church or in helping leadership teams through the gift that that God has given you in music. To serve in the local church or helping in leadership teams through the gift of music that God has given you. So you find that gospel ministry is pegged with a ministry. If you're a gospel artist and you're a gospel musician, you're in the gospel ministry, you can connect with Trinity Fellowship Church. You can connect with Deliverance Church. You can connect with JCC. You can connect with Vosh. You are connected to a ministry. You're not just waking up, going to the studio, doing a a CD, selling it on the streets and saying, I'm a gospel minister. (laughs) There has to be hierarchy. There has to be a church or a ministry that you are pegged with if you want to venture into gospel 
ministry. What about gospel industry? Gospel industry is a section of the music industry. Now, the music industry is not gospel. But gospel industry is a small part of the wide music industry. The music industry is commercialized music. Gospel industry is commercialized gospel music. Are we together? It's dangerous though. I can't say it's, it's wrong to commercialize your music. But the industry is dangerous. Before I was born again, as I close, I had gone too far. I had no idea what's happening. But later on, I realized that there was a kingdom of the devil that was operating. I was attacked by a demon. Like a real demon, not a joke, not a story, an actual demon. I had gone so deep that I was doing various sort of, um, I shouldn't call them rituals, but things like those. I'm not trying to scare anybody, but I mean I was meditating on some chakras and yogas and summoning things and I was, I had gone too deep because this is what they tell you when you do music, you have to go deeper. And the deeper you go, they'll tell you you have to sacrifice, you have to see a witch doctor. One of my friends, most of you may know him, Bamboo, Abraham Bamboo, is a good friend of mine. Before he, he got born again, he was told to go and sacrifice a camel to a witch doctor. And when he did it, he got very sick. He almost died. And God bless him. His parents are pastors. They prayed for him. And he was delivered. Cannibal, most of you know him, right? Do you know Cannibal? <laughs> cannibal Chosen. He got born again as well after going through the same. Many, I have a list of many artists. Because when you go up, when the fame starts coming up, even for me, you go up, there's a price you pay. In those days, if it wasn't a price of abortion, abortion was a price you had to pay. We didn't know it was spiritually connected. But you go through it, and you think it just happened by mistake, then there's a power that comes to you. People start recognizing you now. When you rap, people like you more. When you go on stage, they just cheer. It's the same thing that I know if a secular artist would walk on this platform right now, I don't know who's famous right now. I don't know who people like. I don't know if it's Calligraph, Jones, I don't know. And you just see people, there's something in the air. The spirit behind the music. What is the spirit behind the music you're listening to? That's the question I want to leave you with today. I didn't come to tell you, listen to secular music or don't. It is good or bad. Hip-hop is good or bad. Reggae, no. Those are questions of the surface. The deeper question is, what is the spirit behind the music you're listening to? Is Wam Lambez a song that glorifies the spirit of God? I mean, really, what's the spirit behind this music? It has a good beat. And if you have to do such a song, why don't you then look for a gospel song with good beats like those? Must you listen to Amlambez? What's the spirit behind the song? Right now, I'm closing. Um, research is showing that the most popular... Let me just engage you. Somebody tell me which is the most popular genre of music in the world right now. Most influential genre. Anybody? Take a guess. Genre. I mean, understand genre, Cindy. Anybody wants to answer? Take a guess. Gengeton in the world. Now it's okay. It's a good, it's a good answer. There's no wrong answer in the world. Dunyanzima. Somebody tried. Trap. You're close. It's hip hop music. 
Hip hop music is the most popular and influential music in the whole world right now. And because it is influential, God will use believers. Spirit filled believers backed by the spirit of God to prophesy through hip hop music. Do you believe that? God is ahead of every plan. The issue is what spirit is behind the music you listen to. I want you to play just a chord or a progression of music kidogo to just anything on the keyboard as I'm finishing up. You could be here and your life is discordant. Your life is discordant. You're out of key. You're not right with God. It's not only about the music you listen to, but generally the movies you watch, the friends you have, the influence you're trying to fit in. Today God is speaking to you that you have a second chance. There is a chance for you to get right with God today. Don't say, oh, how will I do it? How will I stay? Everything we do in Christ is by faith. You make the first step, God makes the next one for you. You make the other one, God makes the next one for you. I was just... Just press an off key as he plays. Just keep playing, an off key. So this is the harmony of God right now. God and his children and in this beautiful music of life and his provides salvation through Jesus. And you could be that off key key. That could be your life right there today. Thank you. But you can make it right. Now play it in key. <laughs> you can make it right. Today. Amen. I will ask us all to rise up. And I just want to ask you if you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. You want to be in key, in harmony with God again. I invite you forward. It's a beautiful day. It's a wonderful day. Jesus Christ loves you. He does not condemn you. It doesn't matter if you've listened to Gengeton and you like it. Or to trap and you like it. The issue is not the, the beat. The issue is the spirit behind the songs. You may need deliverance. You need power of the Holy Spirit. You need Jesus to help you. You know, sometimes we do things and we have no strength. You're addicted. I was addicted to alcohol. I couldn't stop drinking. Singa Weza could stop. And I prayed and I prayed and every time I would cry and find myself in the pub. And I go back and I find myself in the pub. But one day God delivered me. I don't know how he did it. I just realized sin are your desire. It just went. You could be struggling with an addiction today. The power of God to deliver you is right here, right now. Seize the moment. I want to welcome you forward those who want us to pray together. For the rest of us, I want us to talk to God. Just talk to God for a minute. Just thank Him for today. Heavenly Father, we thank You for this service. We thank You for Your Spirit. We thank You for Your anointing that is moving and touching lives. I've testified of Your Word. May You touch the hearts of the people. Enter into those struggling with addictions, struggling with secular music, struggling with identity, social media, struggling with self-identity, self-awareness, attachment, but stretch forth your hands to them. Right now through your spirit, I come against every spirit.
of addiction right now. I break your power in the name of Jesus. Father, now release your power unto your people. Deliver everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for you doing this right now. I honor you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray.